Hello, mate. I am Colin from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of a Chasson 728 EV. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your LPG locker, so liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker where you keep your bottles. Using the key, which is your habitation small round key, you can open all the locks on the side of the vehicle. So in here we've got the test bottle. So this is just for me to show you your gas appliances work and so this bottle will come off. What you need to do when connecting your bottle is strap the bottle in with the strap provided and then to connect this pipe which is known as the pigtail, it's left to tighten right to loosen so it's the opposite way with it being gas. Turn the cylinder on at the top and then bleed the gas through. So the best place to bring your gas through if you've had it off for a while is your hob. So light your hob up and then all your other gas appliances should then light on gas because you're feeding the gas pipe with gas, not air. And always make sure that when you are finished, you turn the cylinder off before you travel so it's safer for other road users. That's a six, this will take a bigger bottle, so this will take an 11, um, two of them in this one. So you've got space for a second bottle. So you can just turn the pigtail from one to the reserve bottle when one cylinder becomes empty. Put your awning and your awning light, which will show you on collection your awning. Two fridge vents. WC, this is your chemical cassette toilet. Again, open them with the habitation key. Pinch the locker to release the door. And then to get the cassette out, you need to lift the orange handle and slide the cassette free of the motor room. So you can carry it or you can wheel it to your waste disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. And then to empty, remove the cap, put the cap to one side, when you press the button and tip the contents of the cassette out, once you've tipped the content of the cassette out down the disposal point, there's normally a tap, so put some water in, give it a shake, tip out again, before going in with a cap full of liquid. So it's 120 ml this cap, and you can see there it's been used for blue liquid, so you can use blue or green and pour it into here, or you can just pour by eye what you think is 120 ml in via the cap. Once it's got its liquid in, you can push it back and, put it in and you can use it. Behind the back wheel is where you'll find your dirty water outlet point. So this is your waste water. So this is anything that you've put down a plug hole. So your shower, your hand basin and your sink. Everything goes into a holding tank. And on the way out of your site, you want to drive over the grid for the dirty water. And you want to, it'll be pushed in. You want to pull it out and allow the water to drain out. Leave this open a jar when you're driving home and it'll rock any loose water out of the vehicle. And in the winter, make sure this is fully drained off so that there's no water sitting in the tank that could potentially freeze when we're experiencing colder temperatures. This is your Easy Chef, which is slide out barbecue grill. You've got a gas isolation tap there, so you need to turn that on and make sure you, that you're getting the gas through to here off your main gas bottle on board the front of the vehicle. Skillet there so you can use it or you can take the skillet off and you can put your pans on and have some outdoor cooking. But again, you just And as you can see there, your gas has come through. So take some priming. Just what I would do is just hold and you'll hear and smell the gas for a few seconds before using the ignition and lighting the barbecue. In the van, obviously I haven't had it on there very long, but if you've used it, allow it to cool. Then you can pop the cover back down, lift this up and you'll slide it back in the van and put the catch back on to keep it secure. The back of the van you do have your garage space. We've got a light in here. 
and you've got loads of storage in the garage so you've got your carpet, your cab mat, your tyre inflation kit and your compressor there on and winding handle lives here, it's clipped into place so if you're looking for that it is just here so you've got some space in the garage for storing your bikes, bits and pieces like that on the back of the van you've got your parking sensors and a space to take a bike rack so that's where the back panel has been strengthened to take a bike rack so they're Fiamma bars so it would take a Fiamma rack smaller door into the garage vent for your heating system so that'll just allow the fumes out when operating on there To hook the vehicle up, so this is your hook of points, whether you're doing it at home and you're charging the van prior to going away or you're on a site. What you'll want to do is get your hook of bleed, lift the collar, always hook the van up first, then the site and do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead. This is this locker is known as your Technibox locker. So it's got everything that you need in here. So it's got your water filler, take the cap off, buy yourself a hose pipe and some hose pipe fittings, as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. Flat end of the hose into the tank and allow it to fill. If it overflows, that doesn't matter. That just means it's 100% full. It is lined, it's a wet lined locker. And you can see on board how much water you have on at any one time. Should you have a full tank and you're now ready to drive, and you, when driving with water, if you're going camping, wild camping, you've got to take water with you. If you're going to a site, tend to travel with a maximum of 20 litres. So that's from home to the site if you want to use the taps toilet, um, or you want to make yourself a cup of tea. Or if you move from one site to another site, don't drive around with a full tank of water because it'll make you overweight if you've got loads of gear on board and it's going to use a lot more fuel on the engine. So what you can do is to get it from 100% full to 20 litres, there's a travel drain. Lift this up with the pump on, it'll pump the water out underneath the van and it's going to pump all the water out until 20 litres and then it won't pump anything more out. To remove the last 20 litres or to drain it from full without using the travel drain, underneath the van is a blue pipe with a black 15mm end cap on. So it's like a bung. You just need to pull down on it and that will drain out all the water in the winter to avoid the water from freezing. And that's underneath the skirt here. So that is here. So you would just pull that off and all the water will drain out the fresh water tank. This side you've got all your electrical systems. So you've got your charger unit, which charges the leisure battery off hookup. You've got all your fuses on 12 volts. So do carry some spare blade fuses with you in case one fuse does blow, you can just pick it out. You look in the middle, if the wiggly bits burn out, it's gone, put a new fuse in. And you've got your trips on mains electric. the cab door you do have your diesel filler so it's capless just put the end of the diesel nozzle straight in and fill it with fuel underneath the cab passenger seat is where your leisure battery lives so that's your leisure battery and then underneath the driver's seat with it being a ford that's where the ford engine battery lives you can turn your passenger airbag off here with the key should you be putting a car seat in the front and your bonnet opens with the key on the front of the vehicle so turn it to as you stand at the front of the vehicle turn it to your left to, to, to pop the bonnet and then to release it to your right and you've got your various fluids so you've got your screen wash power steering fluid brake fluid coolant this side along with your dipstick for checking your levels and your oil filler down the other side of the engine Weight plates on the front, so gross vehicle weight, train weight, is on here. This is your build number. If you ever need to jump start the vehicle, as the battery's underneath the driver's seat, this is an earthen point. 
this is a positive point sorry the earthen point is down here so you just earth off here somewhere of the engine hoist itself to get an earth to jump start the vehicle or jump start another vehicle off the motorhome there we go so now in board the vehicle to operate your 12 volt control panel if you're hooked up, you'll get this light on here, which means you're getting 240 volt inside the vehicle. If you don't, you just have 12 volt off your leisure battery. And this is your 12 volt on and off switch. So you just press and hold to turn it off, press and hold to turn it on. Next one, you've got your master switch for your light, and then they all are individually switched around the vehicle. Sorry. Followed by your pump. So if you've got water on board, check beforehand. I'll show you how to check for water. Once you do, turn your pump on and you'll be able to pressurise the taps, toilet and shower. And if you use any of them, you just open the taps and the pump will kick in. Close the taps and it'll stop. Or and light on the side of the vehicle. And then coming down here, these buttons correspond with these labels. So you've got the one of the trailer, which is your leisure battery reading. Take the hook about to get a true reading of your leisure battery. Followed by the one of the truck, which is your engine battery reading. Fresh water, you can see there that you've got nearly a full tank of fresh water on board. When that goes into the red, this will turn into the red and warn you that your fresh water is low. And below, it'll flash when the waste is full. And that means you've got to pull the handle behind the back wheel and get rid of your waste water. To operate your Truma CP digital control panel, which is a heating and hot water, press and hold, it'll turn it completely off and completely back on and then you'll get this screen and now enter press enter you've got a motor home with a thermometer in this is the temperature of the inside of the vehicle that you want it to be so your thermostat so you can have it all the way to off for all the way to 30 degrees it has to be above the outside air temperature otherwise it isn't going to work so for this we'll say 30 degrees and then you press enter to save that then you come back to the menu and there's a thermometer in water. So making sure that you've got water in the boiler and you haven't drained the boiler off and you've got water on board, you can turn your hot water on. So off if you didn't. Eco is 40 degrees of heating your water and it's 10 litres at a time as it's a 10 litre storage boiler. Hot is 60 degrees of that 10 litres and boost will turn off the heating and prioritise the water, the water first. So for this we'll just say hot, which is 60 degrees and press enter. Moving on, you pick your energy source. We've got a picture of a gas bottle there and some electricity symbols. So you can either have it on diesel. So diesel works off your main ignition engine tank. You've got to have a quarter of a tank of diesel or more for this to work as we're on a different level from your main engine intake. So if you're wild camping, you'd use diesel as there's no gas on this one. Diesel, a mixture of 750 watts of electric and diesel. A mixture of 1500 watts of electric and diesel you'd use this in the winter should it be really cold for the first 20 minutes or so to get the vehicle the temperature mixed too then you'll want to turn it off mix because you don't want to waste your diesel if you've paid for a site and electric you've got al1 which is 750 watts of electric and you've got al2 which is 1500 watts of electric so when hooked up just al2 press and the electric will heat the motorhome and the water Next, you've got a fan. So the fan is eco or high. So this is a choice of fan. Eco is far quieter to sleep with. So if you want the heating on overnight, put it on eco and uses less 12 volt feed. High uses all the fan speed. So it's going to take more of a draw off your 12 volt leisure battery. You can time it to come on and off here, just the once. You've got the time on the main control panel. And then you do have the spanner setting where you can reset the vehicle. So if you go all the way down, you can reset the heater. So if you get a warning triangle, you can press reset, preset, initializing, and go back in and reset all that you've just set up previously. So the temperature, the water, the energy source, and the fan again. So to operate this type of fridge, which has a separate freezer box to fridge, and it's a Fetford fridge, so it's manufactured by Fetford. To turn the fridge on and off, you press and hold here. 
and the control panel in the middle goes blank press and hold again and it will come on the first square button is your energy selection and A stands for automatic energy selection so it picks the best source available at the motorhome at any one time so I've got a gas bottle on at the moment but I'm also hooked up and you can see that the picture of the plug has illuminated so it's going to prioritise 240 volt rather than gas if I was to unhook the vehicle it would switch over to gas and self ignite you'll hear it clicking in the background until it ignites the burner at the back of the fridge if I was to then start the vehicle's engine it'll switch over at the battery setting which is a feed off the engine battery when running and all that does is it maintains the temperature when you're traveling so it's got to be chilled beforehand on either gas or electric but what i would be doing is if i was lucky enough to keep it at home put the van on hook up a few days beforehand and then put the fridge on not only will this give the time for the fridge to cool down but it'll give time for the leisure battery to take a decent charge the night before put your shopping in and allow that to chill for a good eight to, tw to 10 12 hours and then when you're ready to travel start the engine unhook the van it'll switch over to battery and then you can travel to your site and it'll just maintain it like a giant cool box should you want to manually select a source so you just press the square button so that's hook up on its own that's battery flashing reds failed code six loss of 12 volt because the engine's not running or gas one thing with automatic energy selection once you've turned the engine off it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas this is a safety feature in case you're in a petrol station and you're about to fill up with fuel and you've left your gas bottle switched on last thing you want is for it to be sparking where there's naked fumes so it will just fail for 20 minutes just change it over like i've just shown you to gas on its own this is your temperature so five when pre-chilling and the fridge is empty once you do put your shopping in, turn it down to three or four because sometimes it can be too strong. And then you've got a frame heater here which stops the control panel from frosting up and the rubbers from sticking to the door when on optimum temperature. And then when you do store the van, turn the fridge off. There's two little catches underneath both, pull them out and slot them into here and what that'll do is it'll stop the air from being trapped in the fridge and freezer and allow air to circulate to avoid smells from forming and that's just a video on how to operate this type of fridge. So don't operate your hob which is again Beckford. On the back here it tells you the pan size so don't go over the pan size that's recommended by the manufacturer otherwise you're going to put too much strain on the burner and your pan simply isn't going to warm up that quick you've got a splash guard on there as well so you can turn that down and that'll just stop that press and hold you will need a match or a clicker but you'll hear the gas come through to ignite the burners so now that is all three gas burners lit. So that's showing you gas appliances are working as they should. So allow it to cool down once you knock them off before you do put the glass lid down, otherwise you will shatter the glass. To operate your Fed Fred duplex oven and grill. So you've got a light on here, ignition. So starting off with the grill, Your grill's lit and underneath you do have your oven. Underneath the oven you do have a storage drawer, you've got your cutlery drawer above, 240 volt socket in the kitchen area so that'll only work when hooked up. And some storage drawers. Directly underneath your fridge on this model is your gas isolation valves. So any problems with gas, turn the bottle off to be safe, but you can isolate each individual appliance should there be a problem when away. And all you need to do, so you've got your fridge, your boiler, your 
hob and your cooker and grill to turn them off that's off that's on but these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced the technician will test each gas appliance Tabarate your bed at the front which is your drop down bed it is a manual bed so once you get the bed down you can undo these straps but just put the straps on to stop the fabric from getting caught in the arms of the mechanical bed mechanism and then when you are finished with it obviously the ladder that's underneath can be stored here clips on here you've got safety nets which clip onto these on the ceiling if you're putting children up in the drop down bed but once you finish with it push it up and secure the seat belt as a safety precaution so that it holds the bed up when it in the upright position so in the bedroom area you've got a large island bed and you do have shelving to one side and a wardrobe to the other side of the bed individual readers with a little switch on so you can turn on whichever reader you want followed by your bedroom switches which are here place to take a tv and some TV socket mountain points there but your bed does lift up so you've got some storage in the front but it's an easy bed system so what happens is you can wind the bed up so using the handle pop that in the front and you can wind the bed up and down so that the bed raises up and you can get a bike in the garage so it gives you a lot more height room in the garage for larger items. So in the middle of this model of vehicle you do have your mid washroom. So to operate your toilet, ensuring that the pump's on, pressing the blue button which the water comes from your fresh water that you put with the horse pipe on the outside. So it's a fresh water flush, you can flush your toilet. So put a small amount of water in first and then before you use it there's a grey lever here which is known as the blade. Slide that to the right, it'll open the blade, everything goes into the cassette, so always use it with the blade open. Give it a good flush after use, and then close it once you've finished. If you bought the blue to go into the cassette, and you bought with the pink in the twin pack, the pink doesn't have anywhere to go on this motorhome because you don't have a separate header tank, but what you can do is dilute it in an empty sprayer bottle with some water, Keep it handy next to the toilet, spray the bowl, it'll clean the bowl and it'll give an order a neutralising sprayer as well so it'll give a nice fragrant smell in the washroom. Flush it and let it all go into the cassette before closing the blade. You'll get three green lights just on here to say that it is full and ready to be emptied, cleaned out and replenished with chemical. Toilet cabinet and a hanging rail for travel, mid centre freestanding sink, toilet cabinet, this is your water getting the temperature there as your water is coming warm, so your hot water system is working, two handy toilet cabinets with some sink plugs in that one and then you do have your shower, so your shower screens are magnetic Duck board in the shower for bearing weight and and better for allowing the water out. You can take that out to give it a good clean, that just just that does just lift out. And when you winterize the vehicle, you leave all your taps throughout the vehicle open, unscrew your shower head from your shower hose, like put the hose down in the shower tray. Any water here will just drain out because it's not like that with a looping where water could house, it'll drain the water out. You do have a ha handy hanging rail for wet towels but also doubles up for wet coats if you've been caught out in the rain. Put a few hangers on there and let that drip dry. And before travelling you always want to make sure that your shower screens are magnetic and stuck together with the velcro bungee cord on the front and pull tight to stop them from opening back up. So now underneath the bed if you lift the big wooden panel off that's here where you can store underneath the bed your boiler lives under here and it's a Truma boiler so it does your heating and your hot water and it's a storage hot water system so the main boiler holds 10 litres at a time 
and heats it up which is great in the summer because there's no chance of it freezing but when we enter our colder months from October to the end of March, start of April it's always recommended that you drain the vehicle down so you'd start off on the outside of the vehicle and ensure that the fresh water tank's empty and the waste water tank's empty then you would come into the vehicle and you'd open all taps within the van and remove the shower head from the hose and lie that in the shower tray just to stop any water from sitting in any pipes damaging any cartridges in the pipe in the taps itself or any pipe work behind the furniture this will allow it out once you've done that come back to here and drain the boiler off because the boiler again you don't want the water sitting in there and freezing because it will cost a lot of money to replace the, bo the boiler which isn't covered under your warranty because it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle down so what you want to do is just down here you've got a black box with a blue diamond on this is a anti-frost valve at three degrees this should automatically open itself up and there's a button on here which would pop out so feel down the front of it and there's a button which would pop out a little blue button that would mean it would was open if you wanted to manually open it just turn the diamond on the top and you'll see the little blue button here manually open the boiler and allow the water out i would always manually open it it means it's done then and you would leave it parked up until you're ready to use it when you're ready to use it turn the diamond back and push the button at the bottom in if the button at the bottom doesn't stay in because you want to go away in the winter best thing to do is put the heating on without the water for the first 10 minutes this area will get lovely and warm so this area will start to get warm then once that sense is less or higher than three degrees the button will stay in if it's less than three degrees the button will pop out but when in use this area is always warm so you've got no chance of that happening when the boiler and the heating system is on that go to the control panel and turn the pump on for approximately 10 seconds you'll just blow the water out of the pump and the filter to avoid the pump from being damaged via water frost damage so always put it on for 10 seconds no longer because it'll damage the pump with no water in but it'll just blow the water out of the pump so that it's safe to sit in the storage compart compartment or the driveway over the winter time waiting to be used in the next season.